which are structured codes. Okay, so what are nested lattice codes? Uh, first, we have to have a lattice, and a lattice is just um, a discrete subgroup of n-dimensional space, and I'm going to visualize all of that in two-dimensional space. And if we want to transmit uh, information with this, we have to confine ourselves to a finite amount of points, and then we have to introduce some sort of a bounding region, and in this example just like a circle, and then we can intersect the circle with the lattice or a translation of the lattice, and then we come up with this. The circled points are now the lattice code, and these now can be used for transmitting. But we don't want a lattice code, we want a nested lattice code, so we have to make some, some further introductions. Um, there's already a region associated with the lattice, which is called the fundamental region. Uh, basically, this, this region, every, every point in this region is closer to the innermost lattice point than it is to all other lattice points. And then I'm attaching this region to all lattice points. These are now the Voronoi regions. And then you can find a nested lattice, which is a, a sub-lattice of the original lattice. The, 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 the red dots here are now the points in the nested lattice. And then we can intersect the Voronoi region of the nested lattice with the fine lattice or the original lattice. And now the circled points here are points in the nested lattice code. And now we can use this nested lattice code, which is also called uh, Voronoi code. Uh, we can now use this for transmitting information. And as an example, I'm assuming that there is no noise at the nodes again. And now each, each node is equipped with the same code, with the same nested lattice code. And the code is in dimension n half, uh, but visualized, visualized here in dimension 2. And what happens is in the first phase, the MAC phase or the uplink, the two users select their messages and they map these messages to uh, two points in the, in the nested lattice code. So they now transmit two points in the lattice. And then these points get linearly superimposed at the relay. So because of the group property of the lattice, which means that whenever you take two points in the lattice and you add them, you are in the lattice again. And now the relay receives another lattice point. But as you see, this point is now outside the Voronoi region of the shaping or the coarse lattice. And then we can apply a so-called modular operation. Basically, this modular operation folds back the lattice point that was outside the Voronoi region. It folds it back to the innermost um, Voronoi region, to the fundamental region. And this is now code, a code word or a code point again. And because we have no noise in the broadcast phase, the two users now see this point, and then they apply the side information principle. That means that they know what they sent in the first phase, so they can then extract the respective other lattice point of the other user. And this basic principle of how this works, now we have to quantify this in terms of what rates are achievable. So I'm going back to the to the block diagrams again, and here this is just now the two lattice points linearly superimposed, and now we introduce the noise back. And then the modular lattice operation, this is the KR is then the uh, noisy superposition of the lattice points. And I'm assuming that uh, for now the, the channel gains are equal and assumed to be 1. Um, and then we can make a quick argument about the number of lattice points that are reliably distinguishable at the relay, which is that we just divide the volume of the Voronoi region of the coarse lattice, or the shaping lattice, which is this. We divide that by the volume of the noise spheres that are introduced by this additive noise. And we come up with this number if we assume that the, that the dimension is very large um, and that the so-called shaping gain of the lattice is ideal. And then we find that this rate is limited by this rate. And the thing is that we, we can actually improve this. We can do better than that by introducing a technique uh, which is called the minimum mean square error estimation and random dithering. And we assume that these dither variables here are uniformly distributed over the Voronoi region, 
of the shaping lattice, but they are known in advance to all nodes. And what we can show is that with the introduction of this linear minimum mean square error estimator, it's just the scaling of this YR, we can reduce the effective noise. That means that if we calculate this KR here, we come up with this equation, which means that we have uh, the linearly superimposed lattice points, this is what we want, plus some effective noise term. And we can show that this, the power of this effective noise is reduced in comparison to the power of the, uh, the actual Gaussian noise. And uh, with the dithering, we can also show that this noise is independent of the lattice points because what this dither does is it makes the lattice point independent of the actual transmitted signal. Okay, so and now in the broadcast phase, we assume that this we just broadcast this noisy lattice point, the relay broadcasts the, this KR, and we introduce the same techniques, that is a random dithering and the minimum mean square error estimation. And we can also now compute uh, what is received at the two users, and what is received is just the two lattice points um, linearly superimposed plus noise. And if we then, um, yeah, if we then d determine the alpha and the beta, we can uh, find optimal optimal values for these and uh, calculate um, the effective noise power. And then we can bound the rate again. And here, if we do that, we find that this is the rate uh, that it is bounded bounded by. Um, Okay, and uh, to extract the lattice point of the other user, we have to employ the side information principle again. And just a remark that for, for general channel conditions, there are various uh, strategies that are proposed. And one is that you can use a technique called superposition uh, coding uh, to improve the achievable rates. But I don't want to get into this because now the sum rate comparison uh, will be done for the case when the the channel gains are all assumed to be equal to 1. And this is just a repetition of the, um, um, the achievable rates, which is now inserted, I inserted all the, the channel gains, uh, the channel, channel gain assumption. Um, and I'm also giving an upper bound, the so-called cut set bound. Um, and how does it look like? Uh, the comparison is I'm plotting on the x-axis the power in decibels. And on the on the y-axis, the rate in bits per channel use, and this is the upper bound, the first uh, curve, and then the first strategy, the AF, is the amplifying forward, and what you see is that for high signal to noise ratios, there is like a constant a constant gap to the upper bound, and this is because uh, we are doing noise amplification. We can't really expect to be optimal for this scheme because at the relay we are broadcasting something noisy, so we're doing noise amplification, and this cannot lead to an optimal solution. Um, this is the decode, the DF is a decode and forward scheme where the relay is fully aware of the messages of the two users. And what we see is that this is essentially optimal for low signal to noise ratios, and it gets worse in comparison to the upper bound for high signal to noise ratios. And this is basically, this is the, the um, the multiplexing loss. That uh, the, the better the signal to noise ratio is, the more we lose by making the relay aware of the two messages individually. And this is the MF, this is the modulo lattice and forward scheme. Uh, and wh what we see is that at high, for high signal to noise ratios, this scheme is uh, more efficient than the amplify and forward scheme. I mean, we can't really expect this scheme to be optimal because for the modular lattice and forward scheme, we're also just amplifying the noise. Remember, we're broadcasting a noisy lattice point, but it's somehow more efficient. It's somehow more efficient to do this modular operation than to just rescale the uh, superposition of the two signals. And as a last uh, curve, this is the, um, this follows from uh, the framework of compute and forward and the thing is that this whole framework for computing um, uh, yeah, combination of messages over multi-access channels but for this particular communication network it basically boils down to doing the same as the modular lattice and forward 
with the exception that you're doing lattice decoding at the relay. And what has been shown is that this rate is achievable and what we see is that this uh, is essentially optimal for high signal to noise ratios. Okay, so short conclusion, uh, the, the, the structured code approach appears to be a very powerful tool to show achievability of rates in communication network. And the principles that are involved are physical layer network coding, um, obviously broadcasting, and the use of side information. That means that whatever I send into the network, when something comes back to me, I should be prepared that this already contains my own message or my own signal so that I might subtract that out. And then in, for certain networks uh, the interference the interference nature of the users uh, can be harnessed or can be used. And uh, however at the moment there's no strategy available that would show the achievability of this upper bound, this cut set upper bound for all channel conditions and for all signal to noise ratios. And these are just a few references that I found helpful in understanding this topic. And yeah, thanks for thanks for listening. I hope you found that nice introduction to the topic. Um, yeah, thank you. <laughs>